Thank you very much, uh, Jérôme, for your kind invitation in uh, Switzerland, and congratulations for this first uh, webinar on SBFP. Uh, my uh, uh, talk today will be uh, a presentation of uh, the new software of the uh, Tectolas PressB1 laser for the for PressB LASIK and for the correction of uh, PressB Opia with laser corneal treatment. Uh, how can we provide an adequate solution for a PressB Opia patient? We know that we have accommodative solutions to recover natural accommodation, like scleral and lens manipulations, or integrate accommodating IOL in our practice. Concerning pseudo-accommodative IOL, uh, pseudo-accommodative solutions, we can use multifocal IOLs, pinul or corneal inlays, or multifocal corneal approaches, as we have seen, have we have seen today with excimer laser or femtosecond laser. What we know today that a large number of groups is working on different solutions to correct presbyopia. Real accommodative solutions doesn't exist and are still in research. None of the multifocal approaches deliver a solution without at least one compromise, and corneal applications seems to offer the less invasive approach for a presbyopic solution if the patient wants to get rid of spectacles of contact lenses. For the corneal uh, approach, we have two uh, specific uh, solutions still under investigation, presbylasic for hyperops, and uh, today this uh, uh, software is an evaluation for the CE mark in Spain, there is one site, and the other site is in France at the Clinique de la Vision. This uh, software can uh, correct not only presbyopia, but also sphere up to plus four diopter, diopters and cylinders up to two diopters. Concerning the int intracord treatment, we have seen that this uh, uh, procedure is already CE marked for sphere from minus 0.5 diopter to plus one diopter without significant cylinder. For presbylasic, we have different multifocal options. Whether we can manipulate the second uh, order uh, aberration with central near addition, and we have seen today that we could use center or decenter uh, central addition, or manipulate higher order uh, aberration like coma, horizontal, or vertical. We know all the mechanism of uh, pseudo accommodation. It's a progressive steepening of the central uh, cornea, most uh, frequently centered. We have already discussed the role of a uh, pupil diameter. The, the role of the pupil is crucial, and with a uh, presbylasic uh, center addition, near vision is uh, better when the, the pupil is small. Intermediate vision is good at almost all pupil size, and this is very uh, important when we uh, um, uh, consider corneal treatment because we have a real progressive treatment and this is very uh, different of bifocal uh, uh, IOL who have only two visions and uh, often very poor intermediate visual acuity and of course far vision is better when the pupil is dilated. The first uh, generation of PRESB1 treatment was initially about 10 years ago uh, a succession of two consecutive hyperopic treatment on the cornea, one small uh, optical zone of about 3 mm, and the treatment of the ametropia on a larger optical zone. In, a, in the second generation of treatment, the, the same treatment than uh, before was integrated in one-step treatment with two different ablation spots of 2 and 1 mm. Now, the uh, new Technolas 200Z100P uh, for presbyopia uh, offers the, the usual uh, um, capacities plus the possibility of treating uh, presbyopia. 
the third generation treatment has modified the symmetry of the treatment according the uh, dominance of the eye with the dominant eye receiving less multifocality when I uh, say dominant eye is a far preferred uh, uh, eye or dominant for far vision receive less multifocality while the amplitude of multifocality of the non-dominant eye preferred for near vision has been increased. So it's a combination of two different quantities of multifocality. This is the, the screen of the, the, the laser which shows this uh, um, uh, two uh, different patterns of treatment here and we'll see this in details later. This uh, approach was used already to prove the feasibility of this concept and this has been done by treating 60 eyes of 30 patients at the beginning of 2007 uh, using this uh, third generation software algorithm. Age of the patient uh, is most from uh, the, the biggest part of the patient between 55 and uh, 55, 65 excuse me, diopters. And this is the evolution of sphere over time and, sphere and spherical equivalent. And you see that the mean uh, sphere at the, the beginning was about a bit less than two diopters. The patient becomes initially myopic and then there is a, a small regression and the, the sphere is close to uh, zero at uh, six months. The, the binocular efficacy of the treatment, the, the treatment must be evaluated in binocular because in most cases we use a small, uh, what we could call a mini monovision with a, a target refraction on the, the non-dominant eyes of usually of minus 0.5 diopter. With this treatment in binocular, 97% of the patient have 0.7 or more uncorrected and 97% of the patient can read uh, Parino 2, which is uh, Jagger 1, binocular, uncorrected. So the, the results are better for near vision than for far vision, but quite acceptable. The patients say they have better vision after surgery. They watch TV without glasses. They can uh, drive a car without glasses. They can live without spectacles. And expectations uh, uh, are full, fulfilled after this treatment for about 90% of the patient. The main uh, uh, secondary effect is uh, night vision, especially for driving. The night vision is better for 20 to 30% of the patient, is the same for the 25% the of the patient, and is worse for 40% uh, of the patient. So we must tell the, the patient that night vision will be uh, poor. This is an example uh, of treatment. This is uh, um, um, the, the study software with the, uh, here the right eye, which is the non-dominant eye. It means the eye preferred for uh, near vision. You have here the program of the treatment for far vision. You choose the optical zone for the, the far vision treatment and the uh, addition in this, in this patient is a non-dominant addition, which we could call the uh, uh, addition low. This is the uh, op scan of the patient before the treatment and after, with here the anterior surface. This is the left eye of the uh, uh, same patient. It is a dominant eye. It is uh, the um, the eye preferred for a uh, far distance, and here is a far refraction and a small uh, central addition zone. This is the uh, uh, pre and post op topography with here the uh, op scan pre op, op scan post op. Requirements for a multifocal treatment is to have a reproducible and stable tomogram, is to have an applicable treatment pattern to the cornea a reversible treatment or adjustable if needed and uh, uh, standardization must be possible and replicability is very important to uh, develop a, a, a treatment in uh, other sites. 
the best performing multifocal solution. It cannot be successful without an appropriate patient selection, of course, we have uh, discussed this this morning, with patient education and patient management. This is extremely important. Managing the pre-op and the post-operative expectation is key to success of all the techniques of, uh, of corneal remodeling for presbyopia. The, main, the most important formula in this algorithm is probably 50% laser ablation and 50% laser management, patient management. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>